So I'm going to introduce Joe Hardesty. Uh, Joe was born and raised in Louisville, Kentucky and began researching his family history in the mid 1980s. Uh, remember then before internet. Uh, with the help of patient and kind librarians, he's been successful in tracing several family lines back to their roots to colonial Maryland. From 2008 to 2017, Joe had been the librarian of the Kentucky History and Genealogy section for the Louisville Public Library here in Louisville. In January though of 2018, he became the library director for the National Society of the Sons of the American Revolution at their national headquarters here in Louisville. Joe earned his master's in library science from the University of Kentucky in 2006. And in 2012, he earned a certificate in genealogical library librarianship from the National Institute for Genealogical Studies from the University of Toledo. I hope it's not Toledo, Toronto. Sorry about that. Uh, Joe has been empowering listeners at state and regional conferences since 1996 on a variety of genealogical research topics and has contributed numerous articles to local, state, and national genealogical publications. So we welcome Joe here today, who's going to guide us through the SAR website. Uh, I'm anxious to learn more about this, Joe, and I'm honored to introduce you and have you here with us today. Thank you. It's all Thank yours, you. Joe. Thank you very much, Nancy. Uh, it, it is indeed a pleasure to be here with you and to uh, see so many familiar names. Uh, geez, it's been a long time since I've uh, spoken in person to the uh, Louisville Genealogical Society. And uh, the room that we were in, as I recall, was getting kind of crowded in those days. And so I cannot imagine uh, what it's like to have somewhat 65 to 75 people uh, tuning in from all over the country uh, watching this presentation. So it's a real thrill, it's a real honor, and I want to thank uh, Nancy and the Louisville Genealogical Society for inviting me to, uh, to present today. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. Let's see if we can make this work. Okay, so um, I'm assuming everyone is able to see the home page of the SAR. Uh, yes, we um, can, Joe. Okay, super. I'm glad to hear that. Um, so Again, as, you, as Nancy says, I'm the director of, this, of the National Society for the Sons of the American Revolution. And, um, you know, it's, a librarian's job is to, is to empower visitors to one's collection with ideas and information and how to basically demystify the collection. Uh, give you uh, an introduction to what's here. And every major library, as you know, in the United States has a catalog of its collection. Every public library does. Every state historical society, every state genealogical society, um, every uh, state archive, uh, all of these repositories of books will have a catalog of its holdings. And a catalog is really nothing more than a, a, a finding aid to help researchers like you when you come in to visit, locate those books. Now I like to, I like to think that there's basically two ways that a visitor to a library or an archive can uh, think of, of approaching the collection. One way is to think of a family surname. Whenever you walk in the door, you're automatically thinking of, oh, I wanna research the Mitchell family or the, the Harrison family or the Mattingly family 
you name the family, there's going to be one in your head that you're wanting to research. So that's one way you could search. Another is to think uh, where are your brick wall ancestors located? Where did you hit that brick wall in your research? Maybe you've gotten as far back as, as uh, Nelson County, Kentucky, which is just down the road from us, or uh, Antrim County, Michigan, or Nassau County, New York. Uh, think of where your ancestors' brick wall is located. And think of that when you search their catalog. And I'm gonna give you some examples of what I mean by that here in just a bit. But right now, I'm gonna take us over to the sar.org's website. Simple to remember, Sons of the American Revolution, sar.org. And you'll see that there's a number of, of options here that one can explore. There's a lot here, a lot that you can explore, and I hope you will at some time in the near future. But right now, I'm going to hover over the library tab that you'll see right there, and you'll see a number of options pop up. And for the first one that I want to show you is come down to the very bottom where it says visiting the library, and we're going to click on that. And here is information about how to contact us, uh, the hours that were open. Um, and by the way, it's really important that you know that we are going to be closed the second and second and third week of July from the 5th to the 20th. We're uh, going to be undergoing some significant renovation and repair work to the uh, to the building. So we're just gonna stay closed so workers can do that safely. So um, you can visit our website. Everything I'm gonna show you, you could do 24 hours a day, but just don't come downtown to our library between the 5th and the 20th of July of this year. You also see that we have an, a minor admission fee to uh, non-members of SAR or DAR. And here's a little map of where we're located and some parking options for you. But this is cool, a 360 virtual tour. Now, a lot of folks have never been here before, but this is a really cool way of, of getting a, a visual idea of what our collection will look like. And hopefully it will entice you to come down and see it for, for yourself. Uh, this is uh, a 3D webcam. And uh, let's see if we can get it to move around. Here we go. You see the little, you could drag with your mouse and click inside and that's what our lobby looks like. You can uh, even walk through the door. And this is what the inside of the library looks like. Pretty cool, isn't it? You can uh, click on these little white arrows and virtually walk forward. You can walk all around this building, and look up and around. This is the reference desk where I and my assistant work uh, almost every hour of the day. This, uh, this entire first floor wall here that you see on your left, that entire wall is nothing but published family genealogies that we have, that people have donated to us over the years. And they're in our catalog. What you see up on the second floor, what we call our mezzanine, is what we call our state collection. And this wraps the entire second floor of our library. So let's suppose you have folks that lived in Michigan or Ohio or Wisconsin or Indiana or 
you name the state, we're going to have a number of books on that state. And in the state collections, you'll find general histories of the state, as well as county level histories and county level abstracts and indexes of genealogically rich data for you. Um, it may, uh, in, in a book on an index of wills for Fairfax County, Virginia, it won't provide the will, but it, it would, at least it would document that there was one and what will book and page number um, you can uh, uh, learn more about and access in other ways. And I'm sure many of you researchers know how to do that. So anyway, that's the virtual tour of our library. And I uh, hope that you'll consider uh, visiting that. So let's see if uh, I can exit out of here without closing out the screen altogether. And I bet I just did. Let's see if I can open up my SAR's site again. Okay, uh, you can see the SAR's homepage. Is that a yes? Someone? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So we're gonna hover over the library again. And another uh, resource that uh, you can take advantage of whenever you want is video tutorials. And I'm gonna click on that for a moment and tell you that we have created a, a small but growing list of video tutorials that anyone could watch at any time. Uh, you might actually get tired of listening to me because I'm the one who does them, but you're more than welcome to watch any of these and share them with anyone that you want. For example, searching city directories, I go into detail on how you can access them online, where. Um, I know Nancy was talking about online book collections and Heritage Quest has a terrific online book collection. So folks, you might wanna watch that one. And uh, oh, there's other resources here, um, some pertaining to, that would be a valuable to SAR members only have access to. And if you're an SAR member, um, I go into detail on how you could access some of these records and even some full length lectures. So these tutorials last somewhere between maybe 10 to 15 minutes in length. Um, and you're welcome to, to watch them. Some of these are just old school ways of doing research, uh, like the Virginia Historical Index. It's a terrific reference guide, but I don't think it's online. So you might want to explore that if you have a lot of Virginia ancestors. So anyway, consider uh, going over to the library and then video tutorials and taking some of those for a spin. And there's other things here too that you can uh, click on and, and dive deeper into. But I think what's gonna be most interesting to folks today is the catalog of the SAR library. And that's at the very top, and I'm going to click on that. And then you'll see a gold bar right here that says catalog. Click here for the catalog, and let's do that. Now, brothers and sisters, at no point had you heard me say that you needed a username or a password to access this catalog. It's free and it's open to everybody. And I just showed you how to access it. Library, library catalog. And this is what our catalog looks like. Uh, and I'm gonna demonstrate uh, the power of our catalog, which honestly is unlike any other library catalog you will ever experience. It's going to be just jaw-dropping. 
And I want to show that to you right now. So I mentioned the two ways to approach a, a library and its catalog. And one is by surname, right? So let's do a, an example of Baldwin family. That's the surname that I'm searching. And I want to see what is in the SAR library on the Baldwin family. And you'll see in the overall to the left that there's 92 hits on that family in our collection. Now, in some cases, you'll find that the Baldwin family married into a Harris family or a Smithton family. So this search will capture all of them, regardless of the title. And you can browse down through this list of 92 titles. You can also come over to the left and you can click on the publication year or by author or by format and perhaps narrow that down quite a bit. But I wanna show you, um, let's, let's scroll down a little bit and let's take a look at this one, the descendants of Deacon Aaron Baldwin of North Bramford. This is the call number. If you were in the library, this is the call number that you would need to get your hands on that piece of microfilm. It says, it says right here that it's in microfilm. And brothers and sisters, this is it. Do you remember those good old days of using microfilm to research your ancestor? Uh, Who's gonna take the time to come all the way down here for this? Not many, I'm afraid. So one of the things that I've been doing here at the SAR is when I find a book in our collection that's online, I'll find the, the link to it. And you'll see right here it, that this particular book is in ebook format as well. Here's another one right down here. Here's another one up here. You're going to see the word ebook as part of the call number in many of our books and microfilms in our collection. Trust me, you will. So let's take this book, The Descendants of Deacon Aaron Baldwin, a little step further. And I'm going to invite you to then click on the title and scroll down to where it says Electronic Resources. Now here's the link from Internet Archive, the link from Happy Trust, and the link from Family Search to that book. And you simply click on the title of any one of those links, and there it is in all of its glory. Ooh. That's pretty cool. Then you can simply click on the page and, and, and read it to your heart's content. If this book this particular book was of great interest to you. Then if you scroll down further, you'll see that you have some download options now. And you can download the PDF to your computer and you won't have to go through all these steps again to get to that book. On the left, in the top left corner is you see a little magnifying glass. That's a search icon. And you can keyword search now within that book for a first name or a place name. Perhaps that would help you research the book further. Now, let's see if I can close this out. There we go. But wait, there's more. Going back to that catalog record of Aaron Baldwin, you'll see that we have other Baldwin family genealogies that I've linked to that you could access that are all online. 
Here's a find a grave listing that we've created for him or found for him. Isn't that cool? And if we go even further, there's online records that you could access regarding his place of birth or death in North Brantford, Connecticut. In this case, you're directed now over to Family Search catalog that Nancy will, I'm sure, talk with you about. And you could find other records, perhaps pertaining to Aaron Baldwin or his ancestors or descendants of that place. And heck, we even created a link to the Baldwin family DNA project that with a click you can go to. Now, brothers and sisters, I don't know beans about DNA research. I'm not there. I'm just not there. Maybe someday I will, and I like to be, but not right now. I'm hoping that you guys that are into the DNA research, you'll find this helpful. If you have a Branford, uh, I mean, a, a Baldwin family uh, ancestor. So uh, that's an example of the Baldwin family. You could do the same with the Butler family, the Caldwell family, the, the Harrison family, the Perry family. You just name the surname and pop it in there into the catalog and just see what comes up. And again, if you see the word ebook anywhere in the call number, then click on the title and scroll down to electronic resources. That's easy enough to do, I think. So we just did a sample search for a surname, but you could do the same thing with a place. Remember on that second floor of our collection is our state's collections. So let's see what's in there. And I'm gonna do an example of Essex County, New Jersey. Now you notice, folks, that I spelled out the word county and I spelled out the state. I'm not sure how many library catalogs uh, like abbreviations. I don't think they do. So take a moment and just spell out the word county and the state. And let's do a search. And here in our collection at the SAR, library, we have 11 books on that county. And that's a pretty manageable size if your ancestor was there. I'd like to suggest a county level search. Because if you typed in this, a town, let's say it's Haywood, Haywood, New Jersey. Haywood might be in Essex County, but we may not have any books about Haywood. And we're gonna have way many books if you do a search for the whole state of New Jersey. So I think, I think uh, naming a county where your brick wall ancestor disappeared off the face of the earth, a county level search is like the Goldilocks. That's just my experience in helping research. I go. So again, we have 11 hits, and here's the title, as you see, uh, the call number to get your hands on that particular book. And sure enough, it too is in ebook format. Here's um, several. Now, this abstracts of Essex County, New Jersey. Here's the call number. I could not find that in ebook format. If you wanted to get your hands on that book, you might want to come down to visit us in person. And we'd love to have you. Here's the history of the oranges in Essex County, New Jersey. Ebook. Let's click on that for a moment, on that title. And if we scroll down 
to electronic resources. Look at all the great stuff we have. Again, the links to the full text copy of that book, as well as online records for Essex County, New Jersey, and even a link to the find a grave listings of that town in Essex County, of which find a grave shows five cemeteries in the oranges of Essex County. And your ancestor might be buried in one of them. Oh, let's see if I, if I mess up. There we go. Okay. So, um, remember the two ways that I suggested that you approach a library, whether it's in person or whether it's online through their catalog. Is search surnames that you have in mind and search by place. And you're gonna see a variety of ways to do that. And Nancy and the other presenters and you're probably already familiar with uh, the, uh, the, the arrangements of like the familysearch.org catalog um, and how easy that is. But I just wanted to point out that the SAR Libraries catalog is, is truly unlike anything else you've seen. Uh, we're, not, we're not as big, I admit it, we're not as large as the Allen County Public Library, or certainly the one in Salt Lake City. We can't hold a candle to them. They're much bigger. But I think our catalog, the SAR Libraries catalog is more robust and can take you to places through our catalog that you would have to reinvent the wheel if you went through those catalogs. So I guess what I'm trying to say is our catalog is on steroids. That's a way to look at it. And I think one of the finest compliments that I received it was recently from an SAR member down in Louisiana who after hearing me describe and demonstrate the catalog, he said, Joe, what, what I'm hearing you say is that your catalog is the first best place that you might want to start researching your, your ancestors. And I guess I have to agree. And I hope you would too. So I think that's about all that I want to share with you. Um, I'm going to uh, stop this screen sharing and open the floor up to uh, questions that Nancy perhaps can put to me if you have any questions. Okay, well, thank you, Joe. That was great. Um, I'm anxious to go uh, travel through your website and try out that um, catalog, but also look at some of those tutorial videos. Those looked great. Um, one of the very first questions that came in is if you're searching for a, uh, a family, do you always have to put the surname and then the word family afterwards? Is that important when you're searching in your catalog? Good question. Uh, I do, but only because of habit. I'm, I'm in the catalog all day, every day. Okay. And I just, I just do it by habit. And yeah, I do. I think it is... I think it's better if you include the word family in the search. And then location, you want to go through how you should, how you should uh, look for a location again. Just reiterate on that. Yes, let me uh, re just briefly uh, summarize that again. If you were to just, if you were at our catalog and you typed in the state of New Jersey or Kentucky or Tennessee, you're going to get a lot of hits. For that state. And that's just way, that's just way too many books for you to browse through the hit list. And if you were to 
if you knew that your brick wall ancestor was in, uh, oh, say Midland, Michigan, we're probably not gonna have any books in our collection on that city or that town, that small town. Now, yeah, Chicago, Chicago, Illinois, yeah, you're gonna have some books. New York, St. Louis, Atlanta, we're gonna have a number of books in our collection for really big towns and cities. But small towns, small towns that have no city directories, uh, we're not, we're probably not going to have any books in our collection on those. So that's why I recommend you search for the county where that town or city is located. And that'll capture all the books as well. So I would type in, you know, Sumter County, comma, Tennessee, or, um, Cuyahoga County, Ohio. Did that answer oh. your question? Yeah, I think it did. And they, and somebody sent in a follow-up one. Does your li does the SAA library have a lot of those county histories um, books? Yes, that were yes, we have a lot of county level histories. Okay. And if you did a county level search, you'd find, you'd find them. Um, I, I wouldn't say that we have every county history. <laughs> I wouldn't no say that. Uh, we're good, but we're we're again we're not as we're not as big as Salt Lake City or Allen County Public. Sad. Here's a question from Linda Balmer. She says, "Does the SAR Library have copies of past SAR members' applications available to non-SAR members?" Example, can DAR members access those applications? Hmm. I think you do, don't you? Well, that's, a, that's sort of a, a yes and no answer. Um, yes, we do. We have them here. And there is a place on our website where one could go to request an official record copy. And... Um, if whoever, whoever asked that question, you're more than welcome to call me and, and I could direct you uh, to where on our website you can request that record copy. Whether you're DAR member or not, doesn't matter. Now, a lot of folks don't know, but it's true, because I'm not, I don't lie, that I'm aware of, <laughs> that you can go on Ancestry.com and they have a catalog. So search the Ancestry.com's catalog, put letters S-A-R in the keyword search box, and, and it'll take you to the collection of S-A-R member applications that have been scanned and uploaded to Ancestry. Now those SAR membership applications run from the, from the beginning of Adam and Eve, or maybe not, not that far back, the beginning of the SAR in 1889 up to 1970. And there's about 140 or 150,000 of those membership applications. And those, those, and that's keyword searchable. So whether you know the name of the Patriot or any of his descendant that was named in the application. You could keyword search either way, that collection. And that will give you the, the application that the member submitted. So, so, would, so would yes, you recommend, and that's the answer to that question. Okay, so you recommend they go to Ancestry's catalog and look up those SAR applications first? I would. And it's free if you, well, if you have a membership in Ancestry, you can get to it there in that way. Um, and again, though, be aware that there's a, a cutoff. It, it doesn't include members that were added after 1970, right? So there's a cutoff line there. 
Um, also, it doesn't provide the supporting documentation that the SAR member submitted with his application. And uh, so that's a whole nother animal. But you asked specifically about the membership application. So. Okay, good to know. Um, and just a little plug for next month, I will be showing them the DAR website and you can access those applications and search for ancestors or descendants and don't have to be a member to access that information, but you know, tune in next month for that. Um, so well, thank I'd be, you. I'd be, Nancy, lastly, I'd yes. be delighted if however much time you have left, if you want me to revisit that question on our website, I can do that before we- Oh, how to access oh. those applications on the website? Yes. Okay, let me give you a few more and then we'll see if we have time. Um, mm -hmm. One question was, do you participate in a library loan system where, where you can borrow a book or send that book to a library for somebody to look at if they're out of state? As a Sadly. private library, I don't think you do that, do you? Sadly, no. Okay. Uh, this, this library is not a lending library. Uh, we don't lend them out. But again, if you, if you have a question about how to get your hands on a book and Nancy can't answer it or I can't answer it, then it can't be answered. <laughs> yeah. If they can find it in your catalog, they, yeah. If they can find that book in your catalog, they need to search World Cat and see if they can find a local library nearby that might have it, right? Exactly. That worldcat.org is a terrific way to find books closer to where you live. Okay. Uh, another question is, do you, does the SAR have uh, researchers that will research for you or access things in the library? Let's say I live in Southern California and I need to access some material in your library. Do you have researchers available uh, at the SAR to do that? Uh, not, not for free. Okay. There's a minimal fee that uh, you can uh, pay and uh, a staffer will will look deeper into that question for you. Okay. Um, but frankly, guys, if you're living in California or Arkansas or Florida, uh, I would hope you would contact your friends with the Louisville Genealogical Society and say, is there a genealogy angel out there that will come down to the SAR for me and research this? That's an excellent thing for them to do. You're right. Contact our society and we do have angels that will do minimal research. You know, yeah. if you have a specific book you want them to look in or something, we could run down to the SAR to do that. And um, you know, if, to, lastly, I'll just say this. If, if all you're needing is a page out of a book that's in our collection, please do call me. I'm more than happy to to retrieve that book, get a digital scan of that page and send it to you. Uh, but I, I'm not able, and I won't copy the whole darn book and I can't go into much research for you, but if it's, if it's minimal, I'd be happy to help you. Okay, uh, we have another question, but it sounds like it's a question for a one hour presentation. And I know, Joe, you are a librarian and not a genealogist, but this person asked, Tina Post asked, can you talk to using proof arguments to prove relationships where documents don't exist? And I think she needs to find one of our uh, videos on, in our collection or search uh, for, um, and family search for this. I, I don't know if you can answer that in two short sentences, but how do you use proof arguments to prove relationships where there aren't documents? Woo. Yeah, I think I'm afraid that's a little over my head. Uh, I know if you, if you go to YouTube and typed in genealogical proof arguments, you're gonna find lots of discussion. Good advice, that. good advice. Well, that's kind of, yes, there are no handouts for this presentation. A person just kind of asked who logged in late, probably after my uh, announcement. So no handout. Uh, but Joe, we have time here, I think, for you to take us back to your website. Now we'd like you to show us two things. 
First, show us where to find your email address. So if we need to email or communicate with you or even your phone number, if it's listed on that website, and then show us how we can access those applications. Okay. All right. That, all right. All right. Let's so I'm going to take back the screen. And uh, someone give me a thumbs up if you see the SARs. You're in. We see it. Okay, great. So um, I'm going to go back to our, oh, I'm sorry, the, um, yeah, the SAR's homepage. And to learn more about uh, how to contact me, um, you have two ways. One is library visiting. Remember that? We talked about that. And here is uh, a phone number to our main switchboard. And call that number and uh, you, the receptionist will direct you to me. Also, if you come up to about right here and come down to SAR staff right here, you'll see who, who works here, what we do, and uh, over here under education, museum, and library, you see that? We're gonna click on that staff and you'll see Colleen Wilson. She is my immediate supervisor. Ray Ann Sauer, who some of you may be familiar with. Uh, she's been around for a while and is a terrific asset. And further down there is moi. And here is an icon for my email. You can simply click that. So you can email any of our staff who work with me in the SAR uh, library. I think that answered your one question, Nancy. Yes, um, that's excellent, thank you. Okay, so let's go uh, over to uh, this site here. Do you see where it says PRS? This is our Patriot Research System. And I'm gonna click on that. And you'll see now you have the options of doing a Patriot search, if you know his name, or a search of existing members, or, dis or a descendant of the Patriot. So that's somewhere in the lineage there. Um, and this is, under construction. So please do not be, don't believe that it's complete. It is not complete at all. But this is how you would go to search if we have a Patriot on our records. So I'm gonna click on the Patriot search and I'm gonna do a search for Caldwell. And the first name is John. And you notice you can search by any, if it sounds like Caldwell, maybe it's Coldwell. You can capture all the spelling variation, or you can do an exact search if you're sure of the spelling. And let's, let's just see what happens. So here's a list of, of uh, 20, 20 records of John Caldwell's that served in the American Revolution in some form or capacity. Um, it gives their state of service right here, whether they, what their rank was, their place or their birth date, their death date if known, um, and even their spouse information. So looking at those, that data right there in your screen, you can cross-reference by eye which John Caldwell you might want to pursue further. And notice in the bottom here are some icons for uh, whether or not there's a known application or uh, other data. And those correspond to these indicators that you see. So if you wanted to request uh, a, a record copy, an official record copy, you would simply uh, 
pick and choose which one you want. And um, oh, let's say this third one down from South Carolina. I'm going to click on that Patriot record. And you'll see now you have the option in the bottom page. Click here to purchase that person's um, record copy. In some cases, there might be a, a link to the find a grave. You see the grave detail right here. And off to the right is a link to that Patriot's find a grave, which I think is pretty cool. So, uh, Nancy, did that answer um, other questions? This is amazing. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, this nice. is very valuable, and I think a lot of us could use this tool. Not yeah. knowing how to get to it before, this is great. Thank you for showing it to us. Yeah, just remember the PRS at, yes. the, uh, at the website. Website, on the homepage, right? Correct. It is on the homepage. Yeah, you may have to look for it, but it's there. But don't forget, too, that a lot of these applications um, have been scanned already and it's searchable on Ancestry. Ah, up through what, 1970, you said, right? So any recent ones would not be here, but right. all those previous to 1970 are going to be there. Want me to go there? So. Oh. No? Sure, we got time. All right, good. Okay. So I'm going to log One in more. to our Ancestry site. Um, if I could just remember what my... Oh. It's on a mannequin on your... <laughs> Ooh, I'm on a, I'm on a different computer. Yeah. Uh, I spoke too soon, guys. I can't remember. That's okay. I'm having, a, I'm having a senior moment. I'm too young for this. <laughs> well, this wasn't part of your plan, so I can no, totally hear it. Kind of, but so that's great. Ancestry does have a catalog. Look for it and do a keyword search for the letters S-A-R, and it'll take you to it. There you go. All right. Well, I don't have any more questions. Nobody else has kind of come through on here, but you have answered some amazing questions. And, um, done a great job showing us your website. It is a very robust our website on steroids, as, as you said. Yeah. Uh, so uh, people need to go there and spend some time just surfing through your webpage. It has a lot of really good information, but the catalog is great. And the PRS with the Patriot Research uh, it looks really good. So thank you, Joe, so much for sharing all this information with us today. And thank you to all the people out there our members and many of our non-members who join us from all across the United States. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we appreciate you sharing time with us on our fourth Tuesday and our second Tuesday uh, workshops and programs. So please go check our website, KYLGS. Uh, you can also look at our membership fee there and join our society if you would like. We have a lot of perks if you join our society. You can get behind that membership wall, look at all our videos. Uh, look at um, all our quarterlies that have all kinds of information in it from the Louisville and Kentucky area. So thank you everybody for attending. And again, Joe, thank you so much for sharing uh, this past hour with us. And uh, okay, so thank you everybody. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next month when we present our program and our workshops in July. Thank you.